All right, let me get things started. Uh, good morning, bonjour. You saw my keynote, you know that my French is not so good. Uh, so I will keep it to a minimum. Uh, merci, thanks for coming uh, this, this, this early in the morning to hear about promises in Node Core. Uh, I haven't had the chance to have breakfast yet, so I hope that you all are doing all right and prepared to dive in. Uh, I'll start off by <clears throat> saying happy birthday to Node again. Uh, this is uh, 10 years. Node was announced in 2009. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Ryan Dahl talked about it at uh, JSConf EU in 2009. Um, it was pretty exciting. I remember that those days. Uh, if somebody can decipher that for me, I think it says happy birthday or something along the lines. Um, you know, it might take a while, so we'll, we'll move on. So yeah, I'm here to talk to you about uh, core APIs in Node and what state they're in, in terms of being uh, venable, uh, promisified. So uh, you can't have a conversation online or in person uh, about promises without puns. Um, but I'm going to do my best here to keep puns, puns to an absolute minimum. Uh, I realize that is a pun. So let's, let's mark it zero, start from there. I know some of you folks out there, but for uh, the people who I don't know, my name is Joe Seppi. I uh, am an open source engineer at a little uh, startup called IBM. And by uh, we, we've, uh, as you can tell by the photo, IBM's been around for a little bit of a while, uh, over 100 years, which always kind of shocks me when I <laughs> Realize that uh, and remember that, um, you know, Apple and Microsoft were what, the 80s or something? And we, we were 1911. Um, IBM has nothing to do with HAL. Uh, people notice that it's one letter off, IBM, H-A-L. Uh, that was just a coincidence, just set, setting the record straight here. Um, so yeah, anyway. Uh, I wanted to bring my family because Montreal's awesome but uh, they couldn't make it. Um, I'm just kidding, that's not my family. That's, that's my family. I'm just kidding, that's my band. Um, I play in a couple of bands. Uh, that's, that's my punk band, that's my improv metal band. These are actually friends of mine in a band called Built to Spill. That's not Sam Roberts down in the corner. That's the drummer of Built to Spill, but kind of looks a little bit like him, right? Um, Sam's a, a Node Core collaborator. So yeah. Uh, I was also in a Misfits cover band, so I thought I'd wear my, my shirt today. I realized when I was going through my slides that I actually brought this shirt uh, with me. So <clears throat> if you're into Misfits, come talk to me later. Uh, speaking of talking to me later, oh, wrong slide. Um, if there's, that one's from JS Conf EU. There, uh, if there's karaoke tonight, definitely give me a holler. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a, a tradition. Okay, so enough of my digressions. Actually, maybe this is kind of a, a little bit more of digressing as well. So my personal context with, with promises is <clears throat> uh, when I used to work at the New York Times a while ago, uh, back in 2012, I started doing a weekly JavaScript lunch and learn that was internal. Every Thursday, we'd get together at noon and bring our lunches in a meeting room and usually be like 10 to 20 people there. It actually, I did it weekly for over a year and only missed a couple of uh, weeks. And it was largely, uh, the, the presenters were largely internal folks at the New York Times. And uh, it was a lot of fun. So I suggest if you, you know, have a company that, that uh, you're able to do that, it's, it's a great way to get people together and, and um, talk about tech. But we did have a couple of external folks come in. We had <clears throat> Tom Hughes Croucher came and, and uh, chatted with us, Rebecca Murphy, uh, Spike Brem, and Dominic Di Nicola. So Tom came and talked about sockets and streams. And again, this is in 2012. So this is uh, uh, Tom, Tom's one of the original uh, Node collaborators 
uh, in the early days. So he came and talked to us about sockets and streams, which was pretty exciting. And Rebecca came and talked to us about a bunch of things, including jQuery. Has anybody here ever even heard of jQuery? No? That's amazing. So I recommend you Google jQuery. Uh, that's Paul Irish, Rebecca Murphy, Adam Sontag, and Alex Sexton. They did a podcast on uh, jQuery and, and other related JavaScript technologies a while ago. But it was a lot of fun. Uh, Spike came and talked to us about Render, which was an, a way to build isomorphic JavaScript applications using Backbone and Node. And uh, it was pretty exciting at the time. Again, this is 2012. Miles was talking about universal JavaScript yesterday morning. And uh, I think the joke was that he was like bringing back 10 years ago or something. And uh, I really related to that because of you know, these conversations we were having then. And uh, Dominic was working on the Promises A plus spec at the time, which was the, you know, is the, the, the spec for how to implement uh, Promises. And uh, so it was, uh, it, was, it was pretty exciting times. Uh, I even wrote on the New York Times website about uh, Dominic coming in and talking to us and about the problems of uh, the async nightmares, the callback hell. Uh, so I actually am a published New York Times writer. That's on my resume. Not really. Um, so yeah, we were, we were fighting callback hell back then. Still, still are sometimes. And then I went and worked at Behance, which uh, was acquired by Adobe. That's uh, Frankie the dog. He looks cute, but he's really serious about business. You can tell by the tie. Uh, Christian looks crazy, but he's also serious about business. Uh, but when I got to Behance, everything was promisified. And that was kind of new for me, like all in, whole hog. Everything we were writing was, you know, just about everything was... Um, was uh, thenable. And so I had to, you know, really ramp up and, 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 and it was kind of like a, a, a mind shift, you know. But again, this was, this was a while ago. Uh, recently, Ryan went back to JSConfiU last year and uh, had this real clickbaity uh, talk, 10 Things I Regret About Node.js, uh, which was his way of introducing Dino. But he brought up a lot of good points, things that he had learned from, from writing Node. Uh, and one of them was uh, regretting taking promises out of Node in the early days. As you can see up there, he says, I, I added promises uh, to Node in, in June 2009, but foolishly removed them in February 2010. Um, he does go on to say that uh, perhaps moving, removing them was a good idea because it allowed the community to work on the problem and flesh out something uh, that worked better for, for uh, the community. Uh, there were a number of um, libraries that would uh, implement promises in different ways, and, and it kind of helped inform uh, you know, where, where we ended up landing uh, and where we are today. But he also says nodes, uh, many async APIs are aging badly because of this. And uh, I'm not sure if this was, I assume this was out of the, the talk, but um, there was a bit of Twitter conversation uh, going on after that. You know, lol at Node.js core modules for still using the callback pattern. Uh, there are lots of lols there. Uh, but as usual, Miles comes to the rescue and points out that a couple of the, the core APIs are actually promisified, um, including, in this example, uh, FS. And uh, people were like, huh, what? So he points out that uh, FS and DNS have uh, an experimental promise API. I don't think that's, this was what, a little over a year ago, so that's not, uh, that's, that's fully in there. Um, and then, uh, of course, you can see in the bottom there, the, the puns are, are raging. You can't uh, get away from them when you're talking about promises. <clears throat> um, and then you know Sam points out that uh, we have this Promisify uh, utility that you can use to to wrap uh, APIs in um, uh, you know a thenable if 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 it's possible. It's not. I wouldn't recommend doing it on all of them. 
So I was talking to Matteo about this uh, a few months ago, and he described it this way, that it's an insanely hard problem that's been there forever and that we've never been able to actually solve, like fully solve. We're working on it, but uh, it's taking time. So the big problem is Promises was uh, designed for browsers. The spec was designed for browsers, and failing... If you have a, a failing promise, it only affects one person, right? You know, uh, uh, in a browser, your unhandled rejection crashes your browser, and you know it's just one person. It's not uh, a whole a whole web app. So if if you have a, a failing promise in Node, it takes down the whole server, and so that affects a lot more than one person and their uh, their their browser tab. So if we look at uh, an example of how this can happen. We have a, a promise set up here, and it immediate re immediately resolves, but there's some JavaScript happening after that. And we may never know, you know if stuff fails in, in some function call or, or what. Uh, we don't really have access to that. And in this example, too, the program ends, and we have no way to get the, the promises that have never settled. So there are a couple of, uh, of challenges there that really create essentially a debugging nightmare. There's been some progress. So zero-cost async stack traces uh, shipped uh, a little while ago in Node 12, and that, that's helpful. Uh, and one of the big problems that we're trying to work on is uh, how to promise event emitters. So promises are settled only once, and event emitters give multiple responses. And HTTP and NET both use event emitter, so that uh, is kind of a big problem. The good news is events.once is done. You know that that only you only get one response from that, so you're good. Uh, you can make that promisable. Um, and events.on needs an async iterator, which, as uh, James points out here. Uh, it's now uh, possible to consume Node.js event emitter events using async iterators. Now, if you saw Miles, uh, not Miles, um, Mateo's talk yesterday, uh, there are still some problems with, with that that uh, we're working on, but um, it is possible if you, uh, if you take the right steps. I think, uh, I don't know if it was James or not, but somebody was warning me about uh, having these conversations and getting stuck down the rabbit hole of microperformance, so I'm going to skip this slide. I guess the, the point is, don't don't obsess about microperformance if you're if you're looking to solve a larger problem. So good news, everyone. La baguette. Things are getting better, right? Um, some APIs are already done, as Miles pointed out earlier. There's been some other work that's been happening. Uh, some PRs are already opened. Um, there's progress. Uh, things are happening. In fact, <clears throat> we met in Berlin at uh, JS CompView, the last one. Unfortunately, for now, it's the really the last one. Um, and had the Collaborator Summit after the event. And we had a really great uh, uh, um, session on promises. There's uh, a lot of folks there and a lot of people interested and a lot of people raising hands for things that we're trying to get done. And, um, you know, one of the discussions was default behavior for, uh, for unhandled rejections in Node.js, which is, um, you know, a complicated topic that uh, there was a survey going around and trying to figure out what's the best way to approach that. Uh, we took some time to go through the core APIs and, and figure out what the status is for, uh, for, for each of them. Um, I think that this spreadsheet is online somewhere, uh, and I need to go update it. Uh, but like I said, there's movement. So there is, uh, Mateo closed a PR uh, not too long ago, and this is around um, emitter. And uh, the hope is that uh, some work that's going on at TC39 will, will help with some of this. Um, and, and again, I think uh, uh, Mateo's talk was yesterday, so he talked a little bit about that. If you get a chance to uh, see the replay, if you didn't see it yesterday, um, it's a good talk. And then uh, 
again, Matteo, who, who is the maintainer of, of streams, so he's like really focused on a Venomiter and, and uh, this, this work. Uh, he landed uh, a change nine days ago, so it's actually not in a release yet, uh, but he landed a way to capture uh, rejections for async handlers. So this is really new. I, so I just thought I'd grab some, some context from, uh, from the GitHub. Uh, well, I say this is really new, but he actually opened this PR, as you can see, in, in May. Uh, it had been around a while, and there were lots of comments and updates and tweaks and stuff. <clears throat> but it landed about a week ago. So as he says here, one of the uh, biggest source of issues with unhandled rejection is the use of a Venomiter in combination with async functions. And currently, there's no safe way to, uh, to, to catch a rejection when it is emitted with an event handler, causing hard to track bugs and memory leaks. The basic practice right now is to, to wrap stuff in a, in a try catch and uh, handle errors that way, but you know, that's problematic for a number of reasons. So as he, uh, in landing this, there are some updates to the docs as well. And as he says here, uh, Using async functions with event handlers is problematic because it can lead to unhandled rejection in a case of a thrown exception. So this is similar to you know what we're looking at before, where um, you know we things get swallowed up and, and you have no uh, idea what had happened. Uh, so this PR adds uh, a flag to capture rejections, uh, an option for a emitter constructor, um, and you can also set a, a global setting for uh, a file to, uh, to to set it as well. And then in doing that, uh, under the hood, when the promise is created, a dot then is, hand, is, is uh, added to it to, uh, uh, to be able to handle um, uh, rejections and, uh, and surface them. So that is good news, right? Um, so like I said, there's movements. I wanted to use this talk as a little bit of a call to action. Obviously, if you're sitting here at 9 AM, then you're interested at, uh, in, in promises in uh, node core. So um, I want to point out that it is a strategic initiative at the TSC. Uh, it's actually a two-year-old strategic initiative, but like I said, there's, there's been progress. Um, you know, this, this is not an easy problem to solve in, in some of the areas uh, where, where um, you know, it would be most useful, like, like HTTP and uh, DNS. Um, and uh, like I said, we're, we've got we're we're, we're trying to uh, manage the the uh, the effort, um, and so there are lots of places where people can get involved and uh, start helping with it. In fact, I have a PR that I've been threatening to uh, to submit for a while now um, <clears throat> to promiseify the crypto APIs. Unfortunately, I bought a house right around JSConf EU. And uh, will this actually play? I don't know. Yeah, it will. That's a bear in our yard. Um, and I haven't sold the old house yet, so I'm like crazy busy. But uh, uh, I have a, a New Year's resolution to get back onto promises. So in January, I'm going to be back uh, on the case. Um, <clears throat> we also have collaborator summits starting tomorrow. So if anybody is going to still be around, please come and hang out. We're going to talk about uh, promises in a number of contexts. Um, on Friday, we have uh, stream support uh, for promises and um, <clears throat> a discussion on streams uh, on Saturday as well, which uh, promises will, will be a part of, I'm sure. Um, I also want to call out, I actually think I have a slide later on, but uh, it makes sense here. Um, <clears throat> James Snell has a talk after me, so stick around. And that's about uh, using promises and, and uh, some tooling to, uh, to help you with using those and, and surfacing uh, challenges with promises. Uh, but generally speaking, you know, come and talk with us. And if you're interested, we'd be happy to have you uh, helping out on this problem. Because with your help, I can promise you we will resolve this. OK, one, that was just one pun at the end. So yeah, thanks.